Hello everybody, thank you for joining us. In today's webcast, I hope to shed light on the many benefits and shortcomings of both the Cisco ASA with Firepower services and the Palo Alto Next Generation Firewall. My name is Justin Jett, I'm the Marketing Manager at Plixer, and I have with me Michael Patterson, who is one of the founders here. I put together some great content for you today, so let's dive right in. First though, a bit of housekeeping. So here's our agenda. The first thing I'm gonna do is just have a short introduction uh, followed by a brief description of what and who each you know, company and solution is. I'll then go over the key areas to look at when deciding on a solution. Now these are the things you should look at when determining your needs and I'll also go into detail about how each company fits into these areas. There are seven areas I want to focus on today. I'll go over six of them and Michael will cover the last one. And here are the key areas. So we have trusted security, ease of use, VPN support, capacity, gateway security, content filtering, and then finally advanced monitoring and reporting, which will show you the NetFlow and IP fix exports from these solutions. I'll then go over cost for each solution based on functionality and traffic volume. So with that, let's jump right in. Firewalls play a critical role in protecting an organization's network from a never-ending list of internet-borne threats. Firewall selection often determines how easily remote locations connect to centralized systems to access essential resources or to complete important tasks. With that in mind, Plixer recently evaluated both the Cisco ASA with Firepower services and the Palo Alto Next Generation Firewall. What we looked for were benefits that our customers were asking for from their vendors as well as the uniqueness of their flow exports. By doing this, we were able to learn what features were important to our customers and see how our customers could use these firewalls in their environments. So let's start our discussion with the Cisco ASA. With Firepower Services, the ASA with SourceFire's Next Generation Intrusion Prevention System, uh, their NGIPS, creates an industry-first adaptive threat-focused Next Generation Firewall. What we found interesting was that this system attempts to create a solution that removes the multiple pieces required in traditional architecture. You know, the, the one where you have firewalls and malware analysis systems and VPN, gateways, IPS, etc. And they do that by bringing together these pieces in one appliance. With the integration of SourceFire, the ASA also gains application control and URL filtering. Specifically, URL filtering, which I'll show you in a later uh, slide. The ASA also brings forth advanced malware protection with the integration of SourceFire. Palo Alto is the maker of the Palo Alto Next Generation Firewall. Palo Alto firewalls, like the ASA with Firepower services, bring many solutions under one roof. They market themselves as a company able to identify applications regardless of port, protocol, evasive tactic, or encryption with multi-gigabit low latency inline deployments for enterprise. In addition, Palo Alto has built-in anti-malware detection with its wildfire subscription. So now that we know a bit more about each company, let's dive into the key areas to look for. The first is trusted security. When choosing a firewall, be sure to select a well-recognized and trusted platform. Barracuda, Cisco, Fortinet, Palo Alto, SonicWall, and WatchGuard are among the brands having carved market share and they've earned that market share for good reason. They deliver trusted security. Whichever brand you select, confirm that the firewall is ICSA certified, which is the industry standard for packet inspection. With that in mind, let's have a look at the trust of Cisco and Palo Alto. Uh, so Cisco Systems has been around since the beginning. It is considered by many to be the largest networking company in the world, and Cisco has products ranging from network firewalls and routers to unified communication uh, devices, including voice over IP telephone systems. And Plixer believes that this is a company that certainly has trusted security. 
Palo Alto Networks, they're newer to the scene, and, and they arrived just in 2005. And while not as large as Cisco, it has a large following of user communities, and Palo Alto, unlike Cisco, has a very specific range of products working entirely in the network security space. So currently, they don't offer routing and switching solutions. They offer next generation firewalls, virtualized firewalls, and network security management. And, and they too are a company that Plixer believes uh, is certainly uh, can be trusted. The second thing to look for is ease of use. So global multinational enterprises typically require excessive security controls, but even those organizations that need tremendous protection don't have to limit themselves to clunky user interfaces for their configured equipment. And many firewalls uh, models deliver tight security and easy configuration options. So when selecting a hardware-based firewall, consider the benefits of you know, the approachability and ease of use. The easier a platform is to administer, the easier it will be to locate professionals capable of installing, maintaining, and, and troubleshooting these platforms. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the interfaces of both solutions so you can see how each company provides ease of use. So the Cisco ASA with Firepower Services is actually two things. Um, so as such, there's, there's two different configurations and, and management interfaces. There's one for the ASA and the other for the Firesight server. So the Cisco ASA exports NCEL to your flow collector, while Firepower Services exports data to the Firesight server, which then in turn sends uh, flows via eStreamer to your flow collector. Um, these are two separate systems on the ASA, and so they need to be configured separately. Um, Mike will go over this in his reporting slides, uh, but I think it's important um, in this conversation as well. After the initial configuration of Firepower and Firesight, management of the system is done either in ASDM or a web interface for, for the Firesight uh, details. So here I can see I have a number of tabs indicating various parts of Firepower in ASDM. For, from various dashboards, I can see information about applications, top destinations, etc. And you can also manage Firepower details via a web interface, which I'll show you in a future slide. The point I want to make is that the Cisco ASA and Firepower are easily managed and offer great details of your data from within their interfaces. Much like the Cisco ASA, the Palo Alto also uses a web-based interface for management and reporting. From the dashboard, I can see common information about my device, including the IP address for management, as well as you know, the versions for various subscriptions on that firewall. The dashboard can also show you other details, like the top applications. While this may be useful to you, you actually can change these dashboards as well by simply clicking on the widgets dropdown. As with the ASA, the Palo Alto was really easy um, to use and it provided great insight with their built-in reports. The third thing that I'd like you to consider is VPN support. A good firewall also establishes and monitors secure channels, enabling remote connectivity. So you wanna look for hardware-based firewalls that support both SSL and IPsec protected VPN connections from similar devices, you know, your point-to-point -point or site-to-site -site VPNs as well as secure connections from traveling employees or, or your remote employees. Another option to consider within the VPN realm is does the firewall offer dual factor authentication support? Many firewalls will let you plug into online APIs like Duo or Authy, which allows for you know, an extra layer of security between your remote users and your network. The Cisco ASA provides a VPN concentrator. So it has a built-in, it's built-in directly into the firewall. One thing to note is that the VPN is a function of the Cisco ASA, not, fi uh, not Firepower. So users connect using AnyConnect to connect users and they can be configured to allow users onto the network via LDAP, Active Directory, or Cisco ICE. The ASA also provides options for dual factor authentication like Duo security um, and this provides an extra layer of security by ensuring even if your user's credentials are compromised, a second token will be required. Now, 
I want to continue with the idea of you know ease of use within this VPN realm. And to do this, I just want to explain really the simplicity of setting up VPN users. Adding and allowing users to connect to the network via VPN is fairly straightforward in the ASA. You start really by creating certificates and these are the certificates that will be used you know, to encrypt the traffic between the client and the gateway. Then you configure LDAP and Active Directory or whatever you're using, like maybe Radius, in the AnyConnect connection profile. And this creates a profile that will act as the authentication mechanism that AnyConnect uses. In this example, I'm showing you the Radius server, but you can select whichever option your organization prefers. This also is where you configure the policy that will be used. It is a, it's within this policy that you would enable dual factor authentication. And you configure this policy in the configure AAA servers group settings. For dual authentication, you would specify the servers used for such authentication, uh, you know, Duo or Authy, for example. Then you need to set up user-based settings like, you know, the IP addresses that are to be used by VPN users. Once you have these components set based on your organization's needs, you'll have a fully functioning uh, VPN running. So with that, uh, let's explore the Palo Alto. Like the ASA, Palo Alto includes a VPN concentrator in the firewall. VPN connectivity is done via the Global Protect subscription. And Global Protect works very similar to AnyConnect in that you download a client to your user's machine and then create the tunnel via the application. Users authenticate to the VPN via LDAP, Active Directory, Radius, or, or you know, really anything similar that you would with AnyConnect. There's also an option to in, import um, you know, via a local database as well, um, which may be useful for you. Um, Palo Alto also supports um, dual factor authentication. Much like the ASA, adding and allowing users to connect to the network via VPN is fairly easy with the Palo Alto. Adding users to the Palo Alto is as simple as creating certificates, and these are the certificates that will be used again to encrypt the traffic between the client and the gateway. Configuring LDAP, um, Active Directory, Radius, or a local database in the authentication profile is the next step, and this creates a profile that will act as the authentication mechanism that Global Protect uses. In this example, I'm showing the LDAP uh, server, but there are a variety of options to choose from. Uh, and here, we're showing the specific servers um, where users connect to, the server credentials, as well as uh, you know, the time limits uh, for authentication. The next step after this is to configure the firewall gateway to allow VPN traffic. Now this is the gateway where users will gain access um, on your network. From this area, I enter details for the authentication itself, the tunnel details, including whether or not I enable IPsec, and the gateway address where users actually connect from. And finally, configuring client access. You know, you have to set up the network where clients will join the network. Typically, this is set to its own subnet so that you know, these users are isolated from other users on the network. Setting this up is as simple as you know, the other steps. I specify DNS details for VPN users, you know, what the DNS search domain is, um, uh, which here is called the DNS suffix, um, the pool of IPs that users connect to, and you know, any, uh, any route details uh, that I need to provide. Overall, setting up VPN users and connecting with Global Protect um, client, it's really easy and it's no more cumbersome um, than you know, any connect. The fourth item to consider is capacity. Branch offices may leverage a firewall in, a, in dual capacity to serve as both a security device and as a network switch. And larger organizations, meanwhile, usually just drop the firewall into a large architecture in which the firewall's only role is to filter traffic. So pay close attention to the manufacturer's recommendations for maximum node support. Exceed a firewall's capacity and you'll experience errors, flat out traffic denials, you know, due to lack of licensing, 
and or uh, you know potentially unacceptable performance. You'll also want to see what type of hardware they use for exporting traffic analysis details. On low-end machines with high traffic, enabling features like NetFlow or IPFix exports can tax the CPU greatly, causing performance troubles. The Cisco ASA brings much to the table with regard to capacity. They have platforms and standalone options like the ASA 5506X with firepower services, and that provides uh, support for throughput of 300 megabits per second. Um, but they also have high capacity solutions like the ASA 5585X with Firepower SSP60, which can provide up to 20 gigabits per second. And Cisco offers you know, a broad range of solutions regardless of capacity, which in turn provides a solution to organizations of you know, any size. Palo Alto Networks brings a wide variety of solutions to the next generation firewall um, capacity table as well. And it starts you know, from their PA500, which offers throughputs of 250 megabits per second, to their, their massive PA7080, which has support for over 200 gigabits per second. So they too offer a broad range of solutions to fit the needs of any organization. So with that in mind, I'd like to jump into the performance details for both solutions. A few notes about performance in general. Uh, both the Cisco ASA with Firepower services and the Palo Alto offer high throughput options as well as small and medium-sized business options for companies that require minimal throughput. The major player with regard to performance comes directly from the features you enable in either system. For example, if you enable malware detection in Cisco Firepower or Palo Alto, you should expect to see a 50% hit to the performance of those um, systems. And if you have higher volume of traffic, you should expect this number to increase, especially if you're reaching the limit for that device. Um, likewise, if you're undertaxing the hardware, you know, let's say you have a Palo Alto PA7080 or an ASA 5585X, you know, for a network with less than 100 megabits per second bandwidth. The likelihood of you overpowering the system is very limited. And the inverse is true also. If you only have a, you know, a smaller scale ASA 5506X or a Palo Alto PA500, you know, with over a, a gigabit uh, bandwidth, then your, your system isn't going to be able to handle that volume. Um, therefore, there are a few things to keep in mind when you're looking at this performance. Um, you should look at your current bandwidth requirements. Again, if you have more bandwidth than the firewall can handle, it'll cause performance degradation. And only enable the features that you need. While both Cisco and Palo Alto provide excellent features, you may not need them all. And finally, you should look to the future your needs may change, and if you anticipate that you'll, you know, say require VPN users or the antivirus capabilities moving forward, consider the impact it'll have on the system. Upgrading to the next device tier now will save you time, money, and frustration in the future. The fifth reason you should consider when planning to purchase a network firewall is gateway security. Many organizations successfully reduce costs by centralizing antivirus, anti-spyware, and anti-spam protection solutions on their firewall. When comparing firewall capabilities and determining total cost of ownership, factor the cost savings that you can you know, see if you deploy these services on the firewall device versus, say, a traditional domain controller or other server. Anti-malware and threat mitigation is brought to the ASA with Cisco Advanced Malware Protection using Firesight. Um, Cisco AMP uh, provides you with global threat intelligence, advanced sandboxing, and real-time malware blocking to prevent breaches. Via the uh, Firesight web GUI, I can see an analysis on threats that are happening. In this view, I can see the indications of compromise by host as well as over time. And I can also see the malware threats and intrusion events. Now, if I drill into these threats, I can see the specific malware that's occurring in a given time frame. From this view, I can see the threat name, file name, as well as the SHA for the file. And once you dig into you know, an identified threat, you can see the entire history of that file. This is known as retrospective security, meaning having the ability to track all interaction points 
with the infected file. Each circle here is a, uh, is a traveling point. Now let's look at the Palo Alto anti-malware capabilities. So Palo Alto security comes from Wildfire subscription. And according to Palo Alto, Wildfire provides detection and prevention of zero-day malware using a combination of malware sandboxing, signature-based detection, and blocking of malware. Wildfire extends the capabilities of Palo Alto Network's next-generation firewalls to identify and block targeted and unknown malware. Palo Alto claims that Wildfire quickly identifies and stops advanced um, attacks without requiring manual human intervention. Now, in this view, I can see the items submitted to Wildfire. Um, this includes the file name submitted, the attacker, and the victim. Because Wildfire is a cloud-based service, I can see the details for my traffic in their website interface. Here, I can see an overview of the malware, and this will show me the actual malware caught compared to you know, the b benign submissions. And I'm also given details about the source of the submission, um, you know, the device sending those details. So both of these solutions you know, offer uh, pretty robust um, details regarding gateway security. Now, the sixth reason um, that I'll discuss is content filtering. Some firewall manufacturers offer web filtering subscriptions, and the benefit is that all of the network services associated with the business, you know, from the gateway security services to content filtering, can be consolidated on a single device. Of course, the drawback is that you have to pay for the privilege, but when, when you're reviewing potential hardware-based firewall solutions, consider your organization's need and budget and determine whether content filtering should be administered from the firewall. If the answer is yes, select a firewall that supports reliable, proven content filtering. The ability to see application-specific details is quite robust in the Firepower interface. Viewing a number of categories from a side checklist, I can select them and then I can add them to a filter. And this will show me the applications that are under a given category. From this view, I can see the type of application it is, as well as the port information, if it's available. And this is good to know because now I can you know, create policy rules to allow or deny um, such traffic. In this case, I'm looking at remote file storage. Content filtering on the Palo Alto is powered by their advanced application detection algorithm and the content filtering is handled by looking at the application behavior via rules. So rather than blocking Dropbox, for example, you could block file sharing, which would block any application that fits that rule, uh, you know, like Box, SugarSync, etc. So let's take a look at what this looks like. By viewing the Applications section in the Objects tab, you can search for applications which Palo Alto has deemed a part of a given category. If I click in the search bar, in this example I search for web browsing, I can see the categories that my search falls under. I can also see the subcategories and technology that the filter is associated with. Then, in the bottom section, I can see the individual items that are associated with my search. This is very beneficial because I can see a much more you know, focused list of applications than I can if I'm only looking at port protocol details alone. Also, since it is based on patterns and not port protocol, I don't have to worry about applications misusing them to bypass traditional firewall rules. So now that you have these details and you know the features, we'd like to take you into the final and, and by no means least reason, um, which is advanced monitoring and reporting. Repeatedly throughout just one business day, a single device can block thousands of intrusion attempts, detect consolidated attacks, and log failing or failed network connections. But this information is helpful to network administrators only if it's available in a readily available format. Uh, so you want to look for firewalls um, that not only monitor important events, but that also log this data in compatible formats. And a good firewall ideally can support next generation NetFlow and IPFIX exports. Given that, uh, Mike is going to now show you how you can take advantage of the advanced flow exports from Cisco ASA with Firepower Services and the Palo Alto Next Generation Firewall. Take it away, Mike.
Thank you, Justin. Hello, everyone. My portion of the presentation will focus on the flow exporting architectures, the insight you can gain by gathering flows, the shortcomings in each vendor's exports. I'm going to cover what other vendors are exporting and how Cisco and Palo Alto can learn from them and how to gain insight into encrypted traffic without the use of man in the middle, you know, certificate hijacking. So both firewalls we're talking about today uh, in the screen captures will be sending NetFlow off to our flow collector called Scrutinizer. And Scrutinizer accepts all NetFlow versions and variations including IPFix and SFlow. And I'll be demonstrating the differences between the flow exports from these two vendors. And of course, I'll show you how to increase the contextual information they provide as well. First, let's take a look at the Cisco ASA, and then we'll come back to the Palo Alto appliance. The uh, Cisco ASA, by the way, exports something called NCEL, which stands for NetFlow Security Event Logs. And as Justin pointed out, the ASA actually has two separate appliances running on the same box. The first one shown here is the traditional ASA, which exports NCEL, and the second one uh, appliance is uh, Firepower, which gets its own IP address. Notice in orange the IP address of the ASA on the right, 10.1.1.251, and Firepower in yellow on the left is 10.1.1.241. Here's how we collect data from Firepower in Scrutinizer. We collect flows from the Cisco ASA of as already stated, um, using NCEL. And this is how we've always collected data from the ASA, but now we have uh, Firepower and Firesight being introduced. So what's different now, though, is that, you know, that we collect uh, data from Firesight, uh, and this is done by sending the Firepower metrics from the ASA to your Firesight server. Scrutinizer then collects these details from Firesight using the eStreamer API. Again, pay attention to all of the different IP addresses involved. So imagine having four Cisco ASA firewalls, all with firepower. All of them would be sending NCEL off to Scrutinizer from their own unique IP addresses. And Scrutinizer would display flows from all four you know, and they'd show up as four different exporters. At the same time, you have the same four firewalls sending traffic details up to the Firesight server, and then Scrutinizer using the eStreamer API to collect that information. So what does it look like? Well, if we go into Scrutinizer's interface and look at the data, we're going to see four different firewalls, all with unique IP addresses or host names, in Scrutinizer and I can click in for details. We also see a single IP address for Firesight which represents the data collected using eStreamer for all four of the same firewalls. What's unique about the Scrutinizer interface is that you can report on the Firepower data across all four firewalls or select a specific firewall by clicking on the IP address. And notice again that the IP addresses representing the firepower logs are different from the IP addresses used by the same firewall to send the NCEL data. So why does Scrutinizer send log information from both appliances? I can't answer that, but what I can tell you is that the details available in the Firesight logs is really pretty good. Let's take a look. So here's a partial list of the details you can export from Firesight, and notice that many of the, value, uh, the values have been crossed out. Now I did that because um, this was actually a document that I used with engineering to say, okay, look, customer can choose all of these, but realistically the flows would be so big that a single flow wouldn't fit inside an Ethernet da uh, datagram. So uh, what you kind of do is you select what portions of the uh, flows or the logs that you want to export out as, um, as IP fix. And you can enable whatever you want uh, in a configuration file. So this, is, this image is really just showing off what we enable by default. Okay, here we are in the Scrutinizer interface reporting on the eStreamer data. 
Now, beyond the dozens of traditional flow exports that also work, you have about a dozen or so reports to choose from. Firesight allows Scrutinizer to report on the, you know, the application on the desktop that triggered the flow, as well as the uh, HTTP host targeted in the flow. Scrutinizer can also report on the uh, username, the application, as well as the URL targeted, which helps track down the malware or the potential source of an application performance issue. All right, now let's change gears and focus on the flow information exported by the Palo Alto firewall. In Scrutinizer, it's a lot more straightforward. Beyond the dozens of traditional NetFlow reports, again, that work uh, with the Palo Alto NetFlow v9 exports, we also built in two unique reports that are specific to their export. And you can get details on the applications running on the end systems, as well as the usernames. But um, what about getting the URLs in the fully qualified domain name, or FQDN, like we saw with the Cisco ASA? Well, Palo Alto doesn't export that, but there is a way to add it. Introducing FlowPro Defender. It sits on a span port and monitors all of the traffic to and from the DNS servers. And then it sends details about the request off to the scrutinizer server as IP fix. And then we use that data and, and correlate it with flows in our reporting. So simply put, FlowPro Defender creates a log of all the traffic to and from the DNS. The log includes the FQDN requested as well as several of the details about the DNS transaction and like I said, IP fix is uh, used as the uh, transport. So here's the value add of FlowPro Defender to any flow export from any vendor. And notice that the, um, over on the left, the ob uh, obfuscated source machines, and you see the destination on the right with the sites like Akamai and Amazon, AWS. Uh, let me just hide that for a second. And notice the words uh, underlined in red, right? So that's all your, um, your Akamai and uh, Amazon, AWS. So, what we do is, using the data we collected from Flow Pro Defender, Scrutinizer inserts it, uh, the FQDN, into the, uh, the reports. And we do this for Palo Alto and every other vendor that exports flow data. The strategy even works if the data is encrypted, which really makes it very useful. As you can see, you see YouTube, Facebook, Microsoft. Um, so it's a great way to see inside that encrypted traffic. All right, now let's do a direct comparison between Palo Alto on the left and Cisco ASA on the right. The uh, NAT details, for example, are pretty much the same. Cisco has a couple more, but we can create them in a Palo Alto export with the uh, report designer that ships with Scrutinizer. And notice the Cisco firewall option in the menu. Cisco allows us to report on the ACLs being violated the most frequently. This is useful information when trying to decide which ACLs are important. And I couldn't do that with the uh, Palo Alto. So let me show you an example of this report. And here you see a list of the ACLs, uh, the ingress ACLs, in this case we do egress as well, being matched the most frequently on the ASA. And um, uh, so this is something we think that Palo Alto uh, would be nice if they added. Cisco and Palo Alto both export the firewall event, and Cisco exports the extended event, which uh, sounds great, but uh, after numerous requests submitted to Cisco, um, we pretty much didn't get anywhere. So we've determined that the extended event uh, value must not hold any substantial relevance uh, because we could not find any documentation on it. So if anyone can find it, please let us know and we'll add it to our reporting. All right. Barracuda is uh, new to the flow export market and they export IP fix and you can see here that the uh, flow, uh, they export both the firewall rule and the firewall reason. I thought that was pretty nice. Uh, Barracuda is not alone. SonicWall exports more details about the flow allowed and denied and here we're seeing the intrusion detected. And uh, now I'm, I'm really doing a lot of comparisons here to the Cisco uh, ASA NCEL export. Um, as well. There you can get some more details uh, from 
firepower, right, from Firesight. Another example from uh, SonicWall is the virus, so it tells me the end systems, um, you know, and SonicWall exports IP fix. Uh, but you know, it's, they're not without problems either. We need a way to whitelist certain behaviors because their appliance, you know, is triggering false positives for us. And then they, of course, aren't alone in the industry for triggering false positives. Uh, VPN reporting is a nice way to segue into my final section. Uh, you know, this is very important. SonicWall has done a good job of uh, being uh, really uh, the first vendor that we saw that focused on VPN reporting you know, to give you some nice details. So um, how can we do some of this stuff with uh, Cisco and Palo Alto? Well, introducing uh, Cisco AnyConnect uh, version 4.2, which exports IP fix directly from the VPN clients. And the DTA, the, excuse me, the details are uh, incredible. Cisco AnyConnect IP fix exports provide insight into the applications running on the desktop that triggered specific flows, so I can actually click on the process name and see the flows. Um, so I'm only showing you uh, one report out of like 20, because uh, I got to give this uh, back to Pre uh, Justin. Uh, the uh, SHA-256 hash, which can be clicked on to verify the executable um, on the operating system, you know, to verify that uh, it's a valid uh, hash. So we go out to total vir a virus total, excuse me, or uh, Cisco Iron Port. Um, so if you like that concept of um, uh, Cisco AnyConnect, which we fully support, uh, we, there, uh, there's another option if you have Palo Alto, it's called IP Fixify. It's an open source free product that allows you to export many of the same e uh, details as Cisco AnyConnect at no additional fee. It's completely open source. Um, and you can see here, it gives you the parent process. Again, the SHA-256, click, go to virus total, and I underlined it in red, you know, being studied as uh, portable executable file or whatever. So get a lot of the same functionality if you're looking for that out of Palo Alto. Um, check out IP Fixify. You can export anything from any operating system, and it's open source. So with that, Justin, uh, I'm going to hand the presentation back to you. So now the question many of you are asking yourself, how much does this cost? Well, let's start with Cisco. So an entry level 5506X starts at $1,695 for the hardware unit. Subscription to the Firepower services um, was something I couldn't obtain from Cisco, um, but I can assume uh, based on other vendors that it's going to be an additional 20%, um, at least per standard subscription model. Um, the higher end units cost quite a bit more. The, uh, the 5585X starts at around $225,000 and can run um, you know, more depending on the throughput required. Uh, regarding Palo Alto, a low end uh, PA500 starts at uh, $4,500 retail. Um, and then you can add on uh, to their subscriptions, which are 20% uh, per subscription. And there's four subscriptions, which include you know, Wildfire as well as Global Protect. Uh, meanwhile, their PA7080 uh, starts at around $300,000 retail. You can add up to 10 network processing cards, um, each costing uh, a little more than $100,000 each. So, in summary, the Cisco ASA with Firepower Services and the Palo Alto Next Generation Firewall offer a broad range of benefits for organizations of all sizes. And deciding which solution to go with is entirely dependent on the features you need and the type of environment you have. So while there are no clear winners today, or perhaps there's only winners, be sure that the features of either solution meet the requirements of your business. Now with that, we can take some questions asked by our audience. So the first question that we have is, is my ASA upgradable after purchase? And really, um, I guess to answer that, that would all depend upon how long ago you purchased your ASA. Um, ASAs um, that have been purchased more recently are much more easily upgradable 
uh, with regard to you know RAM and, and, and CPU performances um, than the older ones. So you'll need to check um, with you know how long ago you purchased, and then I would check with Cisco for specific upgrade paths. Uh, the next question that we have um, is: Does IP Fixify run on Linux? Um, to answer that, yes, it, it runs on Linux um, and Windows. Um, it's also, since it's open source, um, it, you could theoretically compile it to work on, you know, Mac OS X, for example, or or uh, Android or iPhone. Um, so, being open source, you can see exactly, um, you know, what those requirements would be um, moving forward into a different platform. Uh, the next question, uh, you know, what version of Flow Pro Defender do I need to get these new features? <clears throat> um, so the features that Mike showed um, require, um, well, two things. They need Flow Pro Defender 16.2 for those exports um, specific to, you know, especially like fully qualified domain name. Um, but you also will need Scrutinizer 16.2 in order to to see those reports in our own system. <clears throat> um, if you have another flow collector, um, you'll be able to see those uh, those templates um, in uh, Flow Pro Defender 16.2. Uh, the next question is, if I don't have Firesight, will Flow Pro Defender work with an ASA? Um, Yes, it will, um, and it'll actually work with any Flow exporter, um, and actually non-Flow exporter as well, because the Flow Pro Defender, at, at its heart, is actually a an IP fix generating probe. So, it um, sits at a you know say a span port, and then it sees your network traffic, and it generates flow data from that traffic, and then sends it to your um, NetFlow X um, collector. And uh, so we have uh, we have time for probably one more, um, maybe two more questions. Um, I'm an existing customer. Can I evaluate these reports? Um, <clears throat> so uh, y yes, yes, you can. Um, w we're actually uh, changing the licensing too in in, uh, in 16.3 um, coming in uh, this month, and. Uh, what it's doing is it's offering unlimited devices in our uh, free edition. So you can actually try that out, um, and, and then you'll be able to see all of those reports available. Um, so I'll do one more question. Um, and the this question is, uh, can Scrutinizer be distributed? Um, I'm assuming you mean, is it a, um, capable of being in, you know, in multiple uh, environments, so like multiple data centers and multiple, say, branch offices and, stu and such. So um, there is a centralized interface, and we do um, offer multiple collecting um, points um, that, that sync with that centralized interface. And then all flows are deduplicated and stitched, um, and, and basically that allows you, you know, you can scale out to over 8 million flows per second with that type of architecture. So, so with that, um, we thank you very much for uh, joining us in this webcast. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give me, um, you know, uh, send me an email at justin.jet at plixer.com. Um, until next time, make sure you have an incident response system that you can rely on.